United States Army, through SAM at Fort Detrick, Maryland, sold and provided the chemical and biological munitions and anthrax spores to Iraq. That's totally confirmed in the Regal Commission report written by James Toot and the subject of a made-for-TV movie called Thanks for a Grateful Nation that starred Ted Danson and Mark Elgenberger. The United States has a long-standing involvement in the sale of weapons to third world countries. Donald Rumsfeld, a private citizen, met with Saddam Hussein as a political envoy of the Reagan administration on December 20th of 1983. It is a little known fact that he was also president and CEO of the G.D. Cyril pharmaceutical company. According to Howard Teicher, author of Twin Pillars to Desert Storm, he and Rumsfeld traveled to Baghdad on December 17th in order to lay the groundwork for the presumption of full diplomatic relations between the United States and Iraq. Prior to that time, Iraq was on the known list of terrorist countries. Iraq invaded Iran in September of 1980. It is important to note that the ban on the sale of weapons was in force until 1982 when it was lifted with the strong objections from Congress. The U.S. began the transfer of helicopters to Iraq in December of 1982. In 1983, Banco Nacional de Lavoro of Italy and its branch in Atlanta began to funnel five billion dollars in unreported loans to Iraq with the blessing and official approval of the U.S. government. The Reagan administration began secretly allowing Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Egypt to transfer United States weapons, including howitzers, Huey helicopters, and bombs to Iraq. These shipments violated the Arms Export Control Act. From 1985 through 1989, the Department of Commerce licensed 70 biological exports to Iraq including approximately 21 batches of lethal strains of anthrax, shipments of weapons-grade Clostridium botulinum, and West Nile fever virus. In April of 1988, the Department of Commerce approved the shipment of chemicals used in the manufacture of mustard gas. The U.S., with the approval of the CDC and the Department of Commerce, armed Iraq illegally from 1985 through 1989. We knew from the fact that Iraq had got chemical and biological weapons from the United States and used them on Iraqi Kurds and on the Iranians, uh, that they didn't have in their possession, they would probably use them. We knew that all the toxic industrial chemicals that we use in the military, when we move the military, go into combat, we're going to affect everybody. We knew that uh, all of the other weapon systems we had have a horrible health and environmental effect on the battlefield. That's history. And with all the background all of us had, both within the military and within academia, it was very easy for us to understand and predict what was going to happen. The Camasilla Bunker Complex is estimated to be 100 bunkers and 60 warehouses, each the size of a super Walmart. The destruction of Camasilla was not even discussed until June of 1996, when it was addressed by Senator Specter at the Senate Armed Forces hearing. General Schwarzkopf said the following. As I stated, the first time I ever heard of Camasilla was in 1996 when it was first announced by the Department of Defense, and nobody was more surprised than I was. A little later in his testimony, General Schwarzkopf apparently contradicted himself when he said the following. Uh, I remember General Franks came to me, and I assume it was Camasilla he was talking about at the time, because I, I can't, I, it was about the same time frame, and talked about this huge ammunition dump that they had found with, with literally tons and tons and tons of ammunition in it, and there was no way they could possibly retrograde it, and I challenged him on that, and he convinced me that, no, they couldn't retrograde it, and therefore they were going to destroy it in place. I said, fine, now that's Camasilla. From what I heard about the size of the bunker that Franks was talking about and the others that they blew up, these were huge bunkers with, with crates and crates and crates and crates of ammunition in them, and, and I can only assume that, that they just, they looked, they either didn't recognize them or didn't see them at the time, 
we were under pressure to 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 withdraw and under the pressure to withdraw we did destroy everything we could so that the iraqis couldn't fall back in on it using some other organs general schwarzkopf just stated that he was concerned about the iraqis regaining control of the ammunition that was contained at the camasilla ammunition depot however Several individuals have come forward with other reasons as to why the bunker depots were hastily destroyed. Dan Topolsky, I was the Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Defense NCO for B Company, 37th Engineer Battalion. Uh, I was on the Kamasia Bunker Complex mission. Sergeant Topolsky was one of the Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical non-commissioned officers in charge of identifying munitions at Kamasia Bunker Complex in Iraq. I felt betrayed. I felt like um, we had been sold out for dollars when I saw what I saw inside those bunkers. Even though I had 40-some years in military service, if you were to bring in a bunch of ammunition and pile it up in front of me, and one of them was a 122-millimeter rocket with chemicals in it, I would not be able to tell you that that had chemicals in it, particularly if it was an Iraqi rocket with Arabic writing on it or something of the sort. We identify ours when we had them in a very specific way by color coding. I don't have the slightest idea what the Arabs did. General Schwarzkopf stated that we identified our weapons by color coding. According to Sergeant Topolsky, the colored bands identified biological and chemical munitions inside the Kamasia bunker complex. According to Sergeant Topolsky, the yellow or purple bands indicate chemical munitions. The green bands represent biological munitions. General Schwarzkopf also said he could not identify munitions, especially if they had Iraqi markings on them. You will also note these munitions were plainly marked in English and indicated these munitions were supplied by countries like Jordan, England, Russia, as well as the United States of America. According to the 1972 Geneva Convention, weapons of mass destruction are illegal Therefore, according to Sergeant Dan Topolsky, it is very likely that these munitions were destroyed not so much to prevent Saddam Hussein from regaining control of them, but to destroy the evidence of these countries breaking international law. The 37th Engineer Battalion, way back in the air campaign, was ordered by our battalion commander not to wear our protective overgarments unless specifically told to do so. My company pretty much ignored that order because my company commander supported me when I said that that was dead wrong and he's going to wind up with a dead company if he listens to it. Now, a lot of the other companies in the battalion didn't do that. On April 17, 1997, General Colin Powell testified before the same Senate panel. And as was the case of General Schwarzkopf, he was not required to take the oath to tell the truth. In regard to the chemical mop suit, General Powell said the following. We used protective overgarments, boots, masks. I don't think you have seen a single battle scene from the Desert Storm War where our troops were not in mop gear. Well, the Department of Defense officials continue to lie about what we know and what happened during Gulf War I. But it's real simple. The chemical agent alarms went off. There was no other reason for him to go off. The individuals got sick. There's no other reason for him to get sick. And medical tests, my own medical tests, confirm, absolutely confirm, the sarin and cyclosarin exposures, for which I would, had been notified directly by uh, the Deputy Secretary of Defense by name in a personal letter that, hey, Doug, you got exposed to sarin and cyclosarin because you were downwind from Camasilla. But Kamasia was only one of over a hundred sites that we deliberately blew up after the completion of the ground war from March through the fall of 1991.